Hi, this is Jane Latis Emmert. I'm a Montana artist and I'm back to talk to you about painting with Yupo paper, a slick, plasticky watercolor paper, very different than traditional 140 or 300 pound hot press or cold press that most watercolor artists use. And you're familiar with the paint falling into the texture of those pieces and giving you a certain look. With Yupo, the paint stays on the surface because the paper is plasticky and the colors are more vibrant. And I'll show you an example of that. And last week when we did the flowers, um, we did tulips. And these are tulips I did in the past, but let me show you. On traditional watercolor paper, you have a look that's a little more muted. Um, if you look closely, there are texture bumps in the painting, and that's traditional watercolor. The Yupo instead stays on the surface, gives you more vibrancy, and you can see that the colors mix in much more dramatic ways than they do on traditional watercolor paper. This week we're going to talk about doing textures, and this is fun. This is playing with the paint and the paper. Lots of times I'll put on fun music, I'll kind of dance around in my studio, you don't want to be there. This is um, a study that I'm going to do playing with some blues and purple. You take the piece of paper and you throw on colors that in this case um, are analogous on the color wheel. I'm going to put in blues and purples and just let them run and push and play. It's one of the wonders of watercolors on Yupo paper. I love what it does. I'm going to mix up a deep purple. I like to use ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson for a deep purple. And when you do that in Yupo, see how the colors kind of spread and separate from each other? You can use anything you want to create texture. I'm trying to kind of fill in my white holes, but then I'm going to leave it. And you can do a lot of things for texturing. I have an old toothbrush. Take your toothbrush, run it through the uh, dishwasher, and you've got a great painting tool. This will cause splattering, and it will create little polka dots, if you will, and texture in the piece. This is a piece of gauze, and I'll lay it down and press it in. And however you play with this, you'll discover in a few hours that you have created a backdrop of interesting shapes and designs. And that one actually, um, I sucked up a lot of the white, or the paint, didn't I? And I'm not sure I'll like that. I'll turn it around, I'll look at it, maybe I'll splatter a little more water into that so that it can travel, maybe get some paint in there for me. I have no concrete idea as to what this is going to be. This is going to be just a background textured painting. After it dries, I'll look at it and I'll play with it and decide what do I see in here and what do I want to bring out. Um, you are allowed to tip your paper, but don't tip it too much because it'll actually run right off the page. Um, and I've got a really dry spot here and I'm going to create a little bridge so that the paints can connect with each other. And then we're going to let that dry. I'm actually going to move on to a different piece that I started in a similar way. And I'm going to show you the subtraction that you're capable of doing in watercolor on Yupo. This is a piece that I did in blues and purples. And it looked like a mountain scene to me. So I took a wet paper towel and I just started to scrub out some of this to create a sky. Yupo is the only watercolor paper that you can totally erase. The only thing that would remain is if you had a really strong staining color like some of the phthalo colors. They would remain with a stain as a background. Uh, then I had taken an, um, dark green, <coughs> phthalo blue and um, quinacridone gold and I created the the tree shape over it. And I'm just going to add a few more branches so you can see what I do here. Um, it is a simple way to give the impression of a tree without creating every branch. 
I do challenge you to look at the trees in your area. Sometimes we assume things about trees. Do pine trees branches go up or down? It depends on the tree you're looking at. Depends on the type of tree. Depends on the area where you live. And so look closely at the trees. These are um, some traditional Montana pine trees that I'm doing here. And I happen to know from a photo that these are the way the branches go on these trees. Now to me, I'm seeing a mountain, a distant tree line, the foreground trees, and then I think I see a lake here. I think this is a lake and maybe a little stream coming out of it. So I need to create something on this side of the little waterfall to anchor it. For this side, I took some saran wrap and while the paint was really wet, I placed the saran wrap and created the texture. I'm going to demonstrate the same thing on this side. So in order to add a sense of rocks on this side of this little creek coming down, I'm coming in with some strong ultramarine blue and burnt sienna and I'm letting those colors mix on the page here. And then I'm going to take a piece of saran wrap and I scrunch it up into whatever tightness I want. The tighter you put it, the smaller the rock shapes will be. With the uh, saran wrap on Yupo, you can lift it almost immediately, but you need it to um, be a little dry, otherwise it will just blend back into itself. So as I peel it back, I have to decide if I like the texturing that it's created. And for now I do. I may come back in and create a harder horizon line at the top of the rocks. But for now, I'm going to leave that and let that dry. Another wonderful element with Yupo is the subtraction ability that you have. I need my waterfall to flow. And so I'm going to come in with a smaller brush, make a couple of strokes that actually lift the paint, and then blot it with the paper towel. And I can soften that in and create the look of falling water. And it's just going to disappear here into the rocks. Now I want to add a little sense of rock edge to the top here. And where it's dry, I can actually come in and define some of these rocks. And I'm just going to add that in to define that edge a little bit more and separate the rocks from the lake. Okay, so I might let that dry. Okay, so there are going to be some rocks in the, in the stream, hanging over the stream. So I'm going to define some of those to a degree. And let the waterfall and the rocks mix and paint themselves for a while. I would also come back in and add a sense of sky to the painting and say I want a little bit of a sunset sky. I can come in with just a few strokes of a purpley pink color, let it run, and leave some of the white in between. And see where I bumped the green of that tree? I can just blot it and save that green from running into my sky. With a very simple touch you can create a painting that is fun and textured and free without really working hard. I enjoy Yupo because it allows me to play. And I like to add and subtract. I will continue to paint on this for quite a while. And I like to put a painting up um, on my piano or in my kitchen and I'll walk by it. I'll, I'll think it's pretty well finished, but I'll walk by it and I'll go, oh, nope, there, you need to have that little bit of sunlight on the far edge of the 
of the lake that defines the shore. And I'll add that in. Um, I'll pull in maybe a sense of, maybe I'll decide that's a little too wide. So I'll mix up that color a little bit and just blend it in. And then maybe I'll decide that I want a sense of shallowness out here by this point. So I'll just disturb the paint a little bit and it will help create that sense of an island or a point that that tree is standing on. So you'll add and subtract throughout the painting to create what you like. Say you don't like the color of sky you created. You can come back in while it's wet and add a streak of blue and say, you know, I just the purple is too gentle, it's too blah, I don't like it. Um, as long as I carry the color to both sides of the tree, I can change the look that I had. And I've been known to change my sky color about a hundred times. <laughs> Or this tree branch right here is kind of thick, so I'll go in and blot it and let it have a little texture. It's a constant game of addition and subtraction. I like it, I don't like it. I'll change it, I'll add more, I'll take away some. And you'll find that that's the joy of Yupo. The painting tells you where you need to go next. So I hope that you will experiment with creating a texture and then coming back in and saying, hmm, this reminds me of a landscape or a flower, and carving out the painting from what you see inside your initial playing piece that you created. Next week, I will show you how to do a large impressionistic poppy, close up and wild colored. Thank you so much. This is Jane Leda Semmert, and we will continue next week.